Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with episode 2 of my stat maxing series. This follows on, obviously, from episode 1. So if you haven't watched that, watch it first. Now, a few things first. This uses the Don Tonbury trick. This episode is focusing on the Don Tonbury trick, which uses a, a method of getting a lot of AP by converting the damage that Don Tonbury does into overdrive and then you triple the overdrive and you triple the AP and you just end up getting a load of S levels. If you haven't watched episode 1 you should watch that first because the first thing you need to be able to do is to have taken out one eye. Now one eye the monster here uh, is quite an interesting monster but it can be quite easy to take down if you have enough strength and everything else. You can also see here that uh, I'm able to repeatedly take it down without any special setup other than having the celestial weapons having fast and strong characters, but there are many other ways of doing it if your characters aren't as fast or as strong as mine were, having finished the capturing, there are other ways of doing it, so watch episode 1, because what it revolves around is killing one eye like this, until he drops triple AP weapons, so he can drop an ability called triple AP, which obviously it triples the AP that you get, and he drops those with either one or two free slots, and what you want is triple AP weapons with two free slots for each of your main party members, so whichever three you are going to level up first. Then what you can do is you can put overdrive to AP on those weapons, and then you can also put triple overdrive on there as well. Now you don't need these perfect stat maxing weapons, you can also use uh, double overdrive or double AP if you want, but with triple AP being quite easy to get from beating one eye, if you watched episode 1 you should be able to get triple AP weapons for all of your main three characters so you see here my main party is Riku, Waka and Tidus. Now unless you've missed the Suncrest for Tidus or you really don't want to do the uh, Blitzballing for Waka's world champion if you have both of their Celestial weapons powered up I would recommend you use those three. So what we do is we put Overdrive to AP on using Door to Tomorrow and Door to Tomorrow uh, you get 99 off for finishing the capturing process and then you get 99 winning formula for having caught one of every enemy in every area and so that is enough to use 30 winning formula to customize triple overdrive on three weapons and so this is more than enough to get these weapons that we want for farming AP and sphere levels so you start off with triple AP and two slots you add the overdrive to AP and then you add triple overdrive for each of those characters so again it depends on who your main party was I would recommend Riku, Tidus and Waka uh, and that's what I'm going to be using for this end game process you can very easily use anybody else that you want though it's just you won't have access to Tidus or Waka's overdrives so um, I would definitely recommend because um, I would definitely recommend having one of Tidus or Waka so if you've missed Tidus's uh, Suncrest or you're unable to get a Celestial Weapon I would definitely do Blitzball to get Waka's world champion. Now you can see here that I'm putting the, the character who has the most enemy kills throughout the game uh, to Stoic mode and the other two to Comrade. And the reason that you do this is you want uh, all three of these characters to be equipped with their triple overdrive, overdrive to AP and triple AP weapons and then you want one of the other characters, i.e. the character who is not going to be attacking Don Tombri, to have Auto Phoenix. Now that's not strictly speaking necessary, it's just Auto Phoenix, you'll probably have it on your endgame armors anyway if you watch my video on endgame armors. And you might as well have it because it makes the process a little quicker. So what you do is whoever has got the highest number of enemy kills and so whoever Karma does the most damage to, you have them with the Stoic Overdrive mode and their triple AP, triple overdrive and overdrive to AP weapon. And then you have the, uh, basically you have the other character revive them and you have the other two characters set to comrade overdrive mode. Now if you need to learn how to use the uh, comrade overdrive mode, I've done a video on that as well, so you can watch that. So basically, first character has stoic overdrive mode, hits Don Tombri and Don Tombri counters with karma, which does a ton of damage. The overdrive to AP ability converts that into overdrive and then you have triple overdrive as well, so you get three times as much AP. And then on top of that, you have triple AP, so you get three times as much AP, so you actually end up getting uh, an absolute ton of AP and a ton of sphere levels. So one person attacks and uh, gets damaged, and then they have Stoic Overdrive, and the other two have Comrade Overdrive. Now you can use this to very, very, very quickly get S levels, so y you can uh, just keep on attacking right up until Don Tombri has walked forward on all of his turns and is right in front of you. 
So just for demonstration purposes, I am going to uh, flee a little bit early. You don't have to beat on, on Tom Brie afterwards. You don't have to be strong enough to defeat him. You just have to use this. Make sure that all three characters have had a turn from defending. And you can see there, 2 million AP for Tidus and 1.3 for Waka and Riku. So um, they get massive amounts of <coughs> S levels. Now, if you don't get uh, 99 S levels, you can just do it again and uh, just hit him one or two more times. And there you go. So this gets you a phenomenal amount of S levels and allows you to go around and complete the grid. Now uh, you can complete everything that's on there. If you're just doing a 9999 AP pay, uh, HP playthrough, uh, then you don't need to be using clear spheres or removing anything from the grid. You can just complete the whole grid as it is and then add on the uh, extra strength spheres, magic defense spheres, defense spheres, etc, etc. Until you have 255 of those and there is more than enough space on the grid to do that. So you see here, after you've uh, farmed the S levels, you can go around and complete the grid. And you can just go back to using your normal weapons and armor. Now, there's another thing that we have to take into account is that you're going to need a lot of the power spheres, mana spheres, speed spheres, and ability spheres. Uh, as you can see here, I've got about 40 or 50 of each, and you need a way of very quickly getting those so that whilst you're going around the grid, you can activate all the spheres as you use these S levels. And the way that you do that is there is a monster called Kotos, who is another arena uh, creation and you need to be able to beat him to get these spheres. So you see there I've got 50 mana spheres, 40 for one ability, 30 speed spheres, etc. And what you need to do is there is a way of getting 40 of these as you go around the grid. And I'm going to touch on this on the next episode. There is a, an easy way of doing it and a slightly more efficient but very mildly more complicated way of completing the sphere grid, but I'll cover that in the next episode. So for now we're just focused on how we get these ability spheres. Now the monster Kotos has a drop of 20 healing springs and if you overkill him that'll be 40. But what you can do first is you can change the items that he gets to be spheres instead. So instead of getting healing springs you either use uh, extract power or a power distiller if you want the power spheres. Extract speed or a speed distiller if you want the speed spheres etc etc. And then you can just take him out uh, using any means necessary. Now he can only attack one character at a time, so if at least two of your characters have auto phoenix, uh, you should be able to take him down, uh, even if you're a little weaker than I am here. So first things first, use the 99 sphere levels from Don Tonbury, go around and activate as much of the grid as you can. Uh, and then you should be strong enough to take down Kotos. So use a power distiller or extract power or, for, or the equivalent for whatever spheres that you want and then take him down. You can either use the overdrives with the Victor overdrive mode uh, or you can use them with uh, Stoic or Comrade uh, so that when he actually damages you it fills your overdrive gauge as well and then you can use overdrives to take him out. It's very easy for me because I had Walker and Tidus, um, both of them with Celestials and overdrives with break damage limit but you can do it just having any characters, any combination of any three characters with their break damage limit and auto phoenix on at least two of the armors. If you're using the uh, victor overdrive mode, uh, you can fight an enemy in between. And like I say, so you see that they are, uh, Tidus and Waka already have 60% of their overdrive back because they have triple overdrive on the celestial weapons and the victor overdrive mode. So you just have to win one battle in between and then go back to fighting Kotos and you'll have your overdrives full as you can see here to use attack reels and or slice and dice on him again. Now that was just fighting a dingo. Uh, so fighting a dingo, very very easy obviously. Uh, and will get you the 60% overdrive in one hit. But there are actually more useful enemies that you can do this through. Uh, so anyway, this is how you do it. You see I just beat Kotos, went and beat one enemy in between with Victor Overdrive to get the overdrives back and then went, re went right back to using Slice and Dice and Attack Reels. So again, if you wanted to use other characters like Kimari, Auron, Riku or uh, Lulu or Yuna then that's absolutely fine, you don't have to have Tidus and Waka's Overdrives but as you can see the higher your strength gets the easier it is to kill him and you can actually just kill him with one Slice and Dice or one Attack Reels. Now you don't have to fight a dingo as the fight in between. When you're strong enough and you've completed more of the grid, you'll be able to do it on more useful enemies, like you'll be able to just uh, beat a sleep sprout and instead of fighting a dingo, you can just fight sleep sprout, kill him in one hit and you'll get a weapon that you can sell, but more importantly you'll get two teleport spheres as his normal drop, or a chance of dark matters. Uh, so when you're strong enough, you want to be beating either a sleep sprout or one eye as the enemy in between Kotog's fights at lower levels. 
Now, level 4 key spheres, this is a Chimera Brain from the uh, Calm Lands, which you've already captured. So instead of having to go to look for one, you will be able to just fight them in the arena. And you can bribe them for about 100,000 to get a chance at one or two level 4 key spheres. Uh, if the bribe fails, you can just carry on bribing them one gil at a time. So you bribe 100,000 gil the first time. Uh, and then you just bribe them one gil after that. So you can see here um, that even if they ambush you because your characters will be so much stronger, it's not an issue. But this is how you get level 4 key spheres. Uh, it's actually easier to get them from Nemesis as a common steal. Uh, but Nemesis isn't unlocked until you've beaten all of the other area and species and original monsters and you might not be able to do that right away. So when you need level 4 key spheres at early levels as you're going around the grid you can bribe a Chimera a Brain for 100k and uh, possibly get one or sometimes two of the key spheres. So there you have it, that's the Don Tombri trick and Kotos, two extremely important monsters and this will let you fill out the grid. Now you can see here that you can either do the grid first and then go back and fill in the strength, defense, magic defense and other stats separately, uh, which is one way of doing it. So you can either just do Don Tombri trick first and then go around filling in the whole grid and then get the extra stats viz, which we'll be focusing on in the upcoming episodes. Uh, and then go back round so that way you're doing it is very simple um, but you have to go around the, the grid twice or as we'll be covering in the next episodes uh, the enemy that you need to beat for strength spheres you will actually be able to beat at reasonably low levels so you don't have to have gone through the whole grid first if you want to you can try and beat juggernaut and get the requisite number of strength spheres that will need to reach 255 strength and then you can fill in a bunch of those uh, and actually get 255 strength before you start going around the sphere grid which is slightly more efficient marginally more complicated but very slightly more efficient and again I'll be covering that in the next video so what that basically means is you uh, get to the point where you can beat one eye and have the Don Tombri trick with those AP gaining weapons uh, but if you can beat Juggernaut uh, which I'll be showing how to do in the next uh, episode you can get the strength spheres that you would need uh, to reach 255 strength which you will be having to use anyway before the end of the game uh, and then you can fill in a chunk of the sphere grid with these strength spheres before you start going around and filling out the rest of the sphere grid. And this has the advantage of uh, making you extremely strong and it, you can then just sort of meld the stat maxing process in as you finish the grid the first time and it saves you having to go over the grid twice. So next episode is going to be focusing on uh, the actual number of stat spheres that we need and beating Juggernaut who is the next gatekeeper and lets us get 255 strength and everything else is easy from there. So thank you for watching and please like and subscribe for more videos.